many people ask me about um, what the best books are for someone who would like to um, start reading about the occult sciences, specifically the Islamic occult sciences. I get a lot of interest on this topic through my Facebook page and my YouTube channels and people write to me about it. So I thought that I might do a video in which I just um, come up with a kind of a reading list. In fact, I was talking just the other day to a colleague of mine about this topic, so I thought might as well do this. Now, the problem is that the Islamic occult sciences are just that, they are occult. Occult comes from a word that means hidden. And so there is a substantial portion of the Islamic occult sciences, or substantial elements, I should say, that are never, ever committed to writing and can only be learned from someone in person. And typically, that kind of information is not easily divulged. Uh, so I just want to say that um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give, um, as I said, a book listing from which a great deal can be learned through self-study. At least a person can get started. Beyond that, each person is basically on their own. Uh, I don't teach this subject whether, you know, so don't email me asking me to give you classes online or something. It can't be learned online. Even in person, it's very, very difficult. Um, and the fact is that the vast majority of people who are involved in this in the correct and proper and sincere way usually are involved in some measure or another, to some degree or another, in Sufism in the in the um, very intense practice of Islam which involves a very intense and regular practice involving the invocation of uh, of God through various divine names and that's a very intense discipline as well as of course adhering to all of the different um, prescriptions in Islam, following the Sharia, following the Islamic law, so forth, being a proper practicing Muslim, all right. And so then at some point you have to find someone who can who can teach you. So I can only sort of give uh, a list of books where you could get a start. Now the problem again is language. There's very little available in the English language, but there are things which are available and can get one started in certain areas. But in terms of the actual practices of Sufism, for example, again, that is something which you have to learn from. You have to find someone and you have to join some sort of a, uh, a Sufi circle. And uh, other than that, there's a lot of stuff available in Arabic. Now, of course, the most important book is Shamsul Ma'arif, <laughs> Al-Kubra, as it is sometimes known. And there's, there's different recensions of the Shamsul Ma'arif as well. I've, done a lot of research on this. I've given some talks. Most of them are on YouTube. I uh, gave a lecture at the Warburg Institute on that many years ago. And I don't know, that's got so many views on YouTube. But this is a very important book in Arabic by Albuni, if you know Arabic. Um, then there is the book, um, which is known as Manba'ul Usul Wal Hikmah, which is a collection of the various treatises, again by Ahmad al-Buni, the foremost occultist or theurgist in Islamic history. And this consists of a number of different uh, short works, or works of varying length, some are short, some are long. Uh, and especially the short ones at the beginning are really important because they deal with the writing of, of arithmetical or mathematical talismans, which in English are often known as magic squares. If you know the Urdu language, <laughs> um, then actually I think one of the best overall books, which is actually very readable, is this book in Urdu called Tuhfatul Amilin by Hassan Al Hashimi. This is an excellent work, and unlike most works in Urdu on the subject, it's very systematic and it's surprisingly free of. Of, um, of errors. Um, I didn't say typographical errors because in Urdu all proper books are not set in type, they're lithographs and so they're actually written by someone so this is remarkably free of what we should say is copious, is copious errors. Now there's another book 
in Urdu. Uh, I don't have a copy handy to to um, actually display here on on the video to show in the video, but that is called Amile Kamil. It's also in Urdu by Kash Al Barni, and the writings of Kash Al Barni are really quite useful. The problem with, is that they are very badly produced. They're often on very bad paper, and they're full of errors. And he did not write in a systematic way, and this is by design. He did this on purpose. He spread around the information that you need to do these things throughout the book. So you have to read that book and various other books he wrote. But if you do that and you stick with it, you can figure out a great deal indeed. So again, none of these are in English. This is the Shamsul Ma'arif by Al Buni. Then there's the collection of treatises called the Manba al Usul wal Hikmah. And um, yeah, Manba al Usul wal Hikmah actually means the wellsprings of the principles of wisdom. Shamsul Ma'arif means the son of knowledges, which isn't very idiomatic, so I would just say the son of knowledge. Tuhfat al Amirin is like the gift of, of the of the theurgist. Of, um, and uh, yeah, then there was Amil Kamil in Urdu. Now, there are other, so this is the most difficult or the least accessible dimension of the Islamic occult sciences is, is you know, talismans, uh, how to work with the divine names. That's all very uh, difficult of access. Even if you find these writings and you can read the languages, at some point you do have to have a teacher. But then there are other dimensions, other, sorry, other uh, Islamic occult sciences uh, that are much more easily approachable. Um, so they are, of course, uh, there is uh, astrology and there is uh, ilm al-raml, or um, what is called geomancy in English. Now, both of these subjects obviously are, both of these sciences were also practiced in the West, and indeed astrology in various forms is practiced, has been practiced for since time immemorial by numerous cultures and civilizations. And um, there are a lot of useful books. Uh, there are a fair number of useful books on the topic in the English language. So I'll um, go through some of those. There is one other um, Islamic occult science, which is also very, very hard of access and on which there's almost nothing reliable in, in any language. And that is called Ilm al Jafr. It's the most Islamic, I suppose, of them because, you know, as I said, you know, you find astrology in other civilizations, you find other people doing Ramal besides Muslims or geomancy. But Ilm al Jafr is a science which is connected intimately with the Arabic letters. It's um, something analogous to or similar to what you find in, among the Jews, followers of the Jewish traditions of Kabbalah, the Kabbalah and the Zohar. Uh, so there's always there's a fair amount of manipulation of Arabic letters and so forth and their symbolism and again that's deeply again tied in with the practices of Sufism and the divine names but if you want to talk about astrology then there's a lot of really good stuff available uh, a very classic book is actually by the famous Al-Biruni and that's available in English this is called the um, the work is at tafhim li awail sana'at at tanjim it's basically the principles of astrology by al biruni and this is a translation into english by r ramsey wright i actually picked this up in beirut and um, you can maybe find a pdf of this you might be able to find it in libraries what wright did is that he's got the actual arabic text facsimile of a manuscript which i think is in the british library and then his translation of it, which is typed actually. So this is a pretty old book, but it's very, very useful. Most of it is not very relevant today in modern times because um, of course Al Biruni lived a very long time ago. He lived about, a, he died maybe what, 1100 years ago. And um, so uh, they obviously did not have the systems and of calculation that we have today. You know, they didn't have an HP 35S calculator, and they didn't have computers, they didn't have... And so the calculations were, were far more complicated, and you had to be very accomplished in those. I mean, they had astrolabes, they had other things, they had uh, tabulation of data and so forth, but it's still a very interesting book. And um, there is a um, an abridged version of it available in English without the Arabic. Um, 
again, it's just, I think it's just called Al Biruni's Principles of Astrology, and so all the math and stuff has been removed because what he wrote there on, for example, what are called the Arabian parts is very very useful. But anyhow, just just for the sake of completeness, otherwise, there's a lot of uh, important astrology books in English. Really, the best book to learn from is actually called Christian Astrology by William Lilly. And this is the first part of it, and this is the second part of it. And this is available on Amazon. If you don't want to buy it, you can always get a PDF. Now you might think, well, we're talking about Islamic occult sciences, so what does this have to do with Christianity, and what in the world is Christian astrology? I have no idea. I really think, I'm really convinced that Lily just threw that in in the title so that he would um, avoid um, uh, pro potential problems given the fact that um, this book first came out, when was it first published? 1647. <laughs> so, but it is in English, and it's all been retypeset. Um, and on the cover, they have the, a, a facsimile of, I think, the original cover page, or one of the, one of the pages, and so it, it, the mo it's, it's been re redone in modern typeface. And, but the English is the English of the 17th century, so if you're not good in English, you may get confused in certain parts, but this is really an excellent work to have for reference. The far more accessible books in English from which you can learn are by John Frawley. He is an excellent astrologer. So there's this book called The Real Astrology by John Frawley. This is an overview of the subject and it's really excellent. Then there's The Real Astrology Applied, which is actually a collection of essays of his and the book from which you can actually learn a lot is the horary textbook there's uh, different sorts of astrology and the real the most basic form of astrology is what is called horary astrology or the or the astrology of questions when you pose a question someone poses a question and then a chart is cast for the time and place and then the question is answered um, and of course, the more well-known form of astrology is natal astrology. And um, well, that, this is the first edition. This is the first edition, and there's now been a revised edition of the Horary textbook by John Frawley, which is here. Um, and there are certain kinds of questions which might re relate to sporting events, for example. So there's a book called Sports Astrology. So I, I basically have all of uh, John Frawley's books. They're excellent. Um, and recently, there is a book that came out called Horary Examples, which uh, are worked examples of horary charts and by various people. Um, so astrology is very much an approachable subject um, in the sense that there's a lot of good stuff in English. And pretty much anything else written in the English language is a complete waste of time. I know that's a very strong statement to make, but there are a lot of charlatans out there who are doing astrology, uh, just as there are a lot of charlatans who are doing, who are writing talismans and who are, uh, you know, engaging in supposedly engaging in Ilm al-Jafar and so forth in the Islamic world, and especially in India and Pakistan, places of which I have very direct knowledge, but also in the Arab world. So astrology is very, very accessible. Now, if you're going to do astrology, um, you do need a couple of reference works. It's really important that you have what's called an ephemeris. And this is an easily available one for the 21st century. It's an ephemeris is a tabulation of planetary data. You know, it gives you the positions of the planets at a particular time, usually midnight, or some some of them are noon. Um, and this is for the whole 21st century, so from 2000 to 2100. You can get one for the 20th century as well. A lot of this stuff is now available online. You don't have to actually have a hard copy. You can download different uh, ephemerides, it's the plural of ephemeris. Um, and the best one, there is actually a website in, which I think is in German, in, in Germany, excuse me. Uh, the website is there in German, it's there in English. It's called Astrodienst, Astrodienst, I think. A-S-T-R-O-D-I-E-N-S-T. And you can, and there's like 5,000 years worth of, of, of planetary tables, ephemerides there. Um, there's another important book of tables. Uh, for example, there are different sorts of planetary phenomena that take place, such as eclipses, 
Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions, and they are very usefully collected in the Tables of Planetary Phenomena by Neil F. Michelson. It's also a nice book. Uh, the last thing I'll say about uh, an astrology book is there's, um, there's a technique in natal astrology called primary directions. It's very complicated. If you're interested in it, this is the best book on the topic. Uh, primary Directions, Astrology's Master Technique uh, by Martin Ganston. Uh, he's actually also a professor and a scholar of, of, uh, of astrology, especially um, Indian astrology or so-called Vedic astrology or what's known as Jyotish, and he knows Sanskrit and so forth. And this is also a very important book. So um, these are my astrology books, which I would recommend. <laughs> And now that brings us to, um, to what? To geomancy. Uh, the most accessible and inexpensive work on geomancy is this book, The Art and Practice of Geomancy, Divination Magic, and Earth Wisdom of the uh, Renaissance by John Michael Greer. So what is ge geomancy? Well, what it involves, originally they would, they would, um, um, construct certain symbols and they would trace them out in the sand, hence this name geomancy. And there are other ways of going about it, but in essence it, it, it involves constructing uh, certain diagrams. And you get 16 diagrams and out of that you answer a question. So there's always some sort of question, you construct these diagrams and then you get up get an answer. And the best book on that really in terms of its comprehensiveness is actually uh, by Stephen Skinner, Geomancy in Theory and Practice. Now Skinner is a quite a good scholar. I'm very impressed with all of his works and I've certainly not read all of his works. He's got something like 40 plus work books. Um, but this work on Geomancy is very famous but it's pretty expensive. It's 30, 40 dollars and um, if you're actually interested in Western and so-called Western occult, Western magic, occult sciences, Skinner really is the person to read. Um, he's written a very interesting volume on Solomonic magic and one on uh, ancient, you know, Greco-Egyptian magic. It's actually in the publication of his PhD thesis on the subject, uh, which he did in two parts. Published it in two parts. There's also a lot of interviews with him on the on the Glitch Bottle podcast. I also have two interviews on the Glitch Bottle podcast, but Skinner is very interesting. Uh, and a lot of what he says uh, is uh, overlaps with, with Islamic theurgic or Quranic theurgic practices. Um, there is also a lot of information on geomancy in this book called The Fourth Book of Occult Philosophy. Um, so there's a section on, on geomancy here as well. So this is what I would recommend. There is one other final science, and that's alchemy. <laughs> um, alchemy, I don't know much about. Uh, if I did, I think I would have uh, converted uh, some base metal into gold by now and uh, would be using that to finance. But in all seriousness, no, alchemy was a very serious science in the Islamic world, It's as, as it was elsewhere. It's often associated with this notion of converting base metals into gold, but there's actually basically three kinds of alchemy. There's, there's plant-based alchemy, there's the alchemy of metals, and there's the alchemy of living things. And m much of it was really devoted to, to um, the making of medicines. And that's what a lot of plant alchemy is um, involved with. Um, so that is something I know a little bit about. Um, and it's different from herbal medicine, but there is, uh, because of the philosophy and the way the the, the preparations are potentized, um, so there is some. Uh, there are some books. I don't have them handy here at the moment, um, but there are a few books on alchemy as well. Let me get them. Right. So that I was going to say something about alchemy. That's an area which I don't really know that much about. I've read about it, but I haven't actually dabbled in it. Um, and as I said, there's, there's, there's a plant-based alchemy, and alchemy is really concerned with potent, further potentizing, I think, or uh, enhancing the life principle in things. Um, and so there was this idea that there was a life principle in metals as well, uh, and plants, and then of course in animals. 
So there would be um, medicines would be made from plant substances, from animal substances, and also from metallic substances. And this is still done in uh, in Islamic medicine, which still survives in India and Pakistan in some form, to some degree, and. Uh, as well as in Indian medicine, what is called Ayurved, Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, but there are some works on the topic in English. There is this fascinating book called The Alchemist's Handbook by someone named Frater Albertus. This is a pretty old book, but um, I think yeah, first published in 1974. Then there are the writings of Robert Allen, Robert Allen Bartlett. There is Real Alchemy, a Primer of Practical Alchemy. Then there is his, the same author, Robert Allen Bartlett, The Way of the Crucible. And um, the most practical, if you actually want to dabble, this is the only kind I've actually dabbled in, is um, the alchemical preparation of medicinal essences, tinctures, and elixirs from plant substances. And that has a peculiar name. They're called, it's called Spagyric or Spagyrics. So there's this really great book by Manfred Junius, Spagyrics. It's very, very practical. You can actually do a lot of this stuff at home. You don't need a specialized lab. So um, those are the books which I would recommend in all of those areas in the in the areas of astrology, geomancy, alchemy, and then the Arabic and Urdu works I referred to. I will um, try and put links to all of these, at least the English books. Um, I don't know about any links for the Arabic books and so forth, uh, but um, the English books, I'll try and put some links. So this is what I had my, uh, my take on, this is my view on uh, uh, the most accessible books for people who want to just read and try and learn and try and um, maybe uh, attempt some of these things on their own. So I hope you find it useful. Uh, as I said, I will try and put up some links and uh, do um, try and like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.